Hey, it's Darius. The I-75 Summer Special is hot. Get 30 months. Full course includes the 2024 exams, ISC, BAR, and TCP. The new CPA exams are coming. Be ready with 30 months of I-75 CPA Review. Go to I-75CPAReview.com. Hey, it's Darius. And so much energy and effort go into each I-75 video. But it's all worthwhile when you pass and notice the I-75 difference. Is there a certain criteria for a vendor to qualify as a subservice organization? That's what the exam is going to ask. A subservice organization is an external party that provides crucial services to a service organization. And these services are essential for the service organization's operations. A vendor can be considered a subservice organization if it meets the following criteria. If it provides services to the service organization. So a subservice organization is an external party offering services to the main service organization. And these services are typically outsourced functions or outsourced processes. A payroll company who qualifies as a service organization might hire a subservice organization to do direct deposits. And that vendor would be considered a subservice organization to ADP by providing services to the service organization and they have to be integral to the service organization's operations. The services provided by the subservice organization should be crucial or essential to the operations of the service organization in order to qualify as a subservice organization. This means that the subservice organization plays a key role in the service organization's ability to deliver its services to user entities. So if ADP hires a third party to process the direct deposits for everyone's payroll, clearly that third party would be playing a key role in ADP's ability to deliver its services to user entities. So far we know that a vendor can be considered a subservice organization if it meets the criteria of providing services to the service organization that are integral to the service organization's operations. So they're not just hiring a waste management company or a marketing firm. Those vendors would not be considered a subservice organization. Why? Because their services weren't integral to the service organization's operations. Also, the subservice organization's activities and controls have a direct or indirect impact on the service organization's control environment. This means that the subservice organization's controls can influence the service organization's ability to meet its control objectives. And that's another criteria for a vendor to be considered a subservice organization. Their controls would have to have a direct or indirect impact on the service organization's control environment. A subservice organization is subject to monitoring and oversight by the service organization, which may include periodic assessments, audits, or other types of review to ensure the effectiveness of the subservice organization's controls. Why? Because the subservice organization's controls have a direct or indirect impact on the service organization's control environment. All right, what is the primary characteristic that defines a subservice organization? A, an organization that provides services only to user entities. No. B, an organization that provides services exclusively to service organizations. Well, maybe not quite yet. C, an organization that provides services to the service organization that are integral to its operations. Yes, that's what makes it a subservice organization. D, an organization that provides services unrelated to the service organization's operations? No. C is the correct answer. A subservice organization is an external party that offers crucial services to the service organization, which are essential for the service organization's operations. This primary characteristic distinguishes a subservice organization from any other type of vendor, like a waste management company, a marketing firm, or a food and beverage vendor. So A is wrong. A subservice organization provides services to the service organization, not directly to user entities. Its role is to support the service organization's operations. B is wrong. 
while a subservice organization does provide services to a service organization, the defining characteristic is that these services are integral to the service organization's operations rather than just exclusively serving service organizations. And D is wrong. A subservice organization provides services that are essential to the service organization's operations. A vendor providing unrelated services would not be considered a subservice organization. What is the primary responsibility of a service organization when engaging a subservice organization? A, to provide services to the subservice organization. Does the service organization provide services to the subservice organization? No, it's the other way around. B, to manage risks associated with the subservice organization and ensure effective controls. Yes, the primary responsibility of a service organization when engaging a subservice organization is to manage risks associated with the subservice organization and ensure effective controls. Why? We said back here that the subservice organization's activities and controls have a direct or indirect impact on the service organization's control environment. This means that the subservice organization's controls can influence the service organization's ability to meet its control objectives. So back to the question, letter B looks good. The primary responsibility of a service organization when engaging a subservice organization is to manage risks associated with the subservice organization and ensure effective controls. C, to act as a mediator between the subservice organization and user entities, no. D, to replace the subservice organization's controls with its own, no. So the answer is B, the service organization is responsible for managing risks related to the subservice organization and conducting appropriate due diligence to ensure that the subservice organization maintains an effective control environment because that control environment impacts the service organization. All right, how about this? In which of the following scenarios would a vendor be considered a sub-service organization? A, the vendor provides services unrelated to the service organization's core functions. No. B, the vendor provides services that are essential to the service organization's operations. Yeah, that looks good. C, the vendor's control environment has no impact on the service organization. No. D, the service organization has no oversight or monitoring responsibilities over the vendor. No. Has to be B, a vendor is considered a subservice organization when it provides crucial services that are integral to the service organization's operations. And C is wrong because the vendor's control environment would have to have an impact on the service organization for the vendor to be considered a subservice. And D is wrong. The service organization would have to have oversight and monitoring responsibilities over the vendor for the vendor to be considered a subservice organization. All right, what is the role of a subservice organization with respect to the service organization's control environment? What's the role of the subservice organization? A, to replace the service organization's controls. No. B, to have no influence on the service organization's controls. No. C, to enhance or support the service organization's controls. Yes. D, to evaluate the service organization's controls. No. C is correct. The role of a subservice organization is to enhance or support the service organization's control environment through the effective implementation of its own activities and controls. C is correct. Which of the following is not a factor in determining whether a vendor qualifies as a subservice organization? A, if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out a lot. And then go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, where the right teacher makes all the difference.